Let's face it, there are a lot of differences in how pro producers operate compared to beginner producers. But what are those differences? I'm gonna tell you the biggest things that separate the pros from the beginners. The first difference is actually really simple time. Beginners are just beginners, which means that they've only spent a minimal amount of time learning their craft, which by default means they are probably not going to be as good as a pro who's been doing this for years. I've been producing for, uh, you know, getting close to 15 years, so it makes sense that someone who's been doing it for only six months will probably not know a lot of the things that I know. Now that we have that super obvious difference out of the way, let's talk about the nitty gritty stuff I know y'all want to know. Number one, beginners have what is called gas. No, not that kind of gas. Gear acquisition syndrome. Let's face it, many pros have this too, but beginners tend to think all their problems can be fixed with more gear or better gear. I'll hear things like, my interface isn't good enough, I don't have that nice mic, I don't have an analog compressor, I don't have the fancy studio headphones, I need more plugins, and all of this other junk. And none of it is true. If you have the core basics, even if it's relatively cheap gear, you need to understand that cheap gear today, compared to when I first started, is probably twice as affordable and twice is good. Gear today is so much more affordable and better than ever, and pros know that gear only magnifies what is already there. Let me explain what I mean by that. Better gear is only going to help you if you already know what you're doing. In other words, if you are new and you don't know what you're doing, then buying better gear will not actually make you any better than you already are. But as you get better in terms of skill set, then your gear can magnify your deepened skill. Hence, gear only magnifies what is already there. If you buy a thousand dollar mic, but you can't can't get a hundred dollar mic to sound good, your thousand dollar mic was probably a huge waste of money. Pros know that gear is not the end all be all. And if you give pros cheap gear, they're still going to make incredible music. Number two, beginner producers think that getting more effects plugins is what they should spend their money on when it comes time to upgrade. But pro producers focus on getting sound libraries instead. Now I just talked about gear in the first one, but this is different because I'm not saying that you don't buy gear ever, but when it is time to get gear, beginners go and they buy, you know, waves plugins or sound toys or other effects plugins, EQs, compressors, limiters, and all that junk. But if you're using a pro DAW, you know, Logic, Ableton, Pro Tools, etc., then you already have great effect plugins built right into your DAW. But what you don't have great access to are sounds. I'm just gonna say it, getting five different EQs will not make your music better. Getting five different compressors is not gonna make your music better. Getting crazy and weird effects plugins is not gonna make your music better. You know what will? Having better sounds. It kind of blows my mind how so many YouTuber producers talk nonstop about effects plugins, but seemingly never talk about sound libraries. If you want amazing sounding productions, then you need amazing sounds. If you're using stock sounds from your DAW, it's gonna be so much harder to get amazing sounding productions and getting productions that are actually unique. Music is sound, so if there's one thing you should invest in, it's getting sound libraries. This was the first big investment I ever made in my studio years and years ago, and it was the best investment I ever made to this day, and I still use those sounds. So I highly recommend the Native Instruments Complete Bundles if you want an everything bundle. They make some of the best libraries out there, hands down, and I've been a massive Native Instruments advocate for literally a decade since I started using their libraries. So while just buying more gear for the sake of buying gear is a bad way of operating, if there's anything that you should should get, it would be sound libraries. Stop wasting your money on buying new Waves plugins or UA plugins or whatever. And I'm not saying never get effects plugins, but I'm saying that beginners should not be investing in those plugins because you already have great plugins right inside your DAW to use. And if you don't know how to use those to their full capacity, why on earth are you buying new ones? Instead, build up your library of sounds so you can make better sounding productions. Number three, beginner producers tend to spend all their time trying to get their productions totally perfect with a million little tweaks and end up only producing like one song per month or some other super small number. Pros, on the other hand, crank out productions very fast. One of the most eye-opening experiences for me was when I started working in a studio and saw just how fast producers can actually work. As in, we were making music for brands like Coca-Cola and had two days to write and produce a track that was ready for delivery. Two days, and these tracks sounded absolutely incredible. What I learned from this was just how fast you can work if you allow yourself to make decisions quickly and stop tweaking a million times and being okay with imperfections, instead focusing on the important things and ignoring the tiny details that everyone obsesses about that really doesn't make a difference. Reality is that pro producers will be the first to tell you that they pretty much never produce a perfect track because there's no such thing. It's literally subjective as to what perfect even 
even is. Instead, pros work on producing a lot of music and they do it fast. If you only make one song per month, I promise you will not learn nearly as much as if you produce one song per week instead and got four or five songs per month made. If you want to be a pro, then you need to start working like a pro in terms of speed and efficiency. I'm not saying take shortcuts, but I'm saying stop wasting time on stuff that won't make a big difference in the long run. Number four, I know this is going to sound a little harsh and mean, but it's true. Beginners tend to make excuses. Now hear me out, because I'm actually guilty of this too, and there are pros that struggle with this as well. But beginners, they tend to make excuses as to why their productions don't sound great, and as a result, don't actually even open up their DAW to make music. Instead, they're gonna go on the good old YouTube and binge tutorials, telling themselves they're being super productive. And it's pretty much all just a big excuse. If you hardly ever open your DAW but simultaneously complain that your music doesn't sound awesome, that's an excuse. Stop making excuses. Pros are constantly working on new music even when they don't feel like it or they feel stuck or they feel like they don't have a ton of ideas. And, and by the way, I'm not advocating for never taking a break at all. Resting is super important, but if you go days or weeks without ever opening your DAW, but also spend a ton of time watching tutorials, that's basically like making one big excuse. It's a lot easier to watch YouTube videos about producing than actually producing because once you open the DAW and start to work, if what you make doesn't sound like what you hear those of us YouTube creators making, then you feel like you suck and down the path of feeling bad about yourself you go. So here's my suggestion. When you work on making music, don't worry about how your music compares to anyone else. Instead, focus on creating and doing it a lot without these high expectations. Focus on quantity and not quality. Focus on finishing as much music as you can without worrying about making it sound pro. What happens is the more music you make and the more songs you finish, the better quality each one is going to be. Number five, beginners spend most of their learning time watching mixing tutorials and trying to learn how to mix, but pros spend most of their time focused on getting better sounding productions before ever mixing. I've talked about this a ton, but producing and mixing are two separate skills and two separate processes, but beginners don't understand this, which might have something to do with YouTubers making them believe that if only they knew how to mix, then their productions would sound awesome. <clears throat> Just saying. Pros know that if their productions don't sound awesome before mixing, then mixing won't save it. Trust me, I've been emailed a lot from beginners asking me about EQ and compression and hey, can you listen to my mix? And guess what? Nine out of 10 times, the mix is not the problem. The production is the problem. Pro producers are amazing at finding great sounds, you know, building awesome arrangements, pulling out incredible performances, and getting their production sounding incredible before mixing. Mixing is super important, and I'm not saying that mixing is not important, but so many producers get wrapped up believing that mixing is everything. But even professional mixing engineers understand that they cannot effectively do their job if the production doesn't already sound awesome. The job of a mixing engineer is to take what is already there and polish it. And they can't do that if the production doesn't already have everything the mixing engineer needs. So if you wanna understand exactly what I mean by this and get a clear walkthrough of what you should be focusing on instead, then you need to watch this video right here where I'll break down why you should stop focusing on mixing and what to do instead. Talk soon.